Hey guys, the name is Chris Barocci. Welcome to Gear Corner. Today, I want to show you a really interesting custom guitar. It's not only awesome because it's a T style, which is already a win in my book, but also because it only costs 1,777 euros, which is roughly the same in US dollars. This is the amount of money what you would pay for mass-produced American-made, Japanese-made, sometimes even Korean-made guitars. But wait, this is a German Luthier's guitar. How is that even possible? Let me tell all about it in today's video. This is the Tone Fox Alcaster. In case you enjoy what I'm doing here, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel. Also check out the description box under the video. You'll find timestamps, gear links, additional infos, and a link to my merchandise in case you want to grab something and support the channel. I'd absolutely appreciate it. Let's talk about specs first, and then I'll explain how this can be so affordable for what it is, which is a high-end luthier instrument. Let's start with the body wood. This is a very light guitar because it's, it's a thin line. It's an American red alder body, but it's chambered inside like thin lines are, just without the F-hole. And no big surprises regarding the neck, that's a maple neck with a rosewood board. Let's talk about the pickups. These are hand-wound German-made Ray Gerald pickups, which are made for this series, for this guitar. The guys at Tone Fox and Ray Gerald, who made these handwound pickups for this series, had a couple of prototypes, and then they agreed on these two, which are pretty interesting, actually. That is a normal Tele bridge pickup, a 50 style, but it's overwound, so it's a little more hot and a little more open and percussive than, uh, than what you would expect from like a normal 50s bridge pickup. Then, the neck pickup looks like a P90, but it's not a P90. They tested it, they wanted to put a P90 uh, together with the uh, Tele Bridge pickup, but they were just too far apart. Like the neck P90 was just too meaty, too, too big sounding and too mid-rangey compared to the bridge pickup. So they agreed on just sticking to a normal Tele neck pickup, which this is, but it looks like if it was a P90. So they used the uh, the visuals of a P90, the, the uh, enclosure of a P90, but inside that's again a slightly hotter neck tally pickup. So cool. <laughs> The machine heads and the bridge are from Wilkinson. If you know the brand, you know that Wilkinson makes really nice parts, but those are relatively affordable parts. And this is the first detail that kind of explains to me the price of the guitar, and we'll get into that even more in detail in a second. And now let's talk about one of the most important details about a guitar, the neck, the playing feel and the neck profile. It's a nice and round, sort of D, maybe like a, a soft C, 
uh, neck profile is not too thin, not too thick. It's right in the middle. I guess this is something what you would call like um, a slightly thicker 60s profile. So it's more in the modern side, uh, but it's, um, it's not like a super thin one. Definitely not. And up here, it becomes a little more chunky which is nice because you want to grab to it more it's nothing in the way it's uh, nice if you're used to thicker necks as well but um, it's really not a chunky one at all and while we're talking about the neck that is an actual bone nut it's not tusk it's not nylon or any sort of a plastic it's um, it's an actual bone nut and now let's talk about the finish of the guitar <laughs> The neck has a satin nitro finish, which almost feels like oiled and waxed. It's like super smooth and uh, not at all sticky. Very, very nice and feels like a neck should feel, in my opinion, to be honest. And the body has a two component finish. Uh, this is not nitro at all, but it's also not like your regular polyurethane finish, which feels very, well, it's very sturdy, but it feels too plasticky for many, for me, for sure. So uh, this doesn't feel like that. This is somehow way harder. It feels very smooth and uh, it's also not super glossy. It is like semi-glossy. So it, it does feel very exclusive and not very far from like a nitro feel, but because it's not nitro, it's way more sturdy and robust. The Alcaster ships with a case, a guitar case, which is again, which is very nice, of course, because not every brand includes a hard case with a guitar that you buy for like 15 or 1700 euros. Uh, so that's nice, but it's a, a standard case. It's actually a Toman made case, which is a normal wooden case with a black Tolex on it. It does the job, it protects the guitar and looks fine. It's just not like a super exclusive one. So how can this guitar be so affordable, even though it sounds insane, it looks fantastic and it's a, it's a dream to play it. To understand this whole situation, I have to explain who makes these guitars and how he makes them. The brand is called Tone Fox, which is a sub-brand of Tone Fuchs. It's Fuchs. It's a German word, okay? Don't mess up the pronunciation. Thank you. Tone Fuchs is a German boutique brand making super high-end luthier guitars. It's pretty much like a one or maybe two-man operation. It's a really small company and uh, Uwe, who is Mr. Tone Fuchs, uh, is one of the most meticulous person I've ever heard about like he really really pays attention to each and every detail like he has a crazy wood library like all the old woods he dries and you know uh, sort of stores and he just doesn't only pay attention to how nice and how exotic that wood is which are factors that are important for each and every like guitar maker, obviously, how pretty it is and everything. He's also really serious about how dry the wood is, how old the wood is he buys and how long he dries it even longer and uh, and how the resonance of those woods are, what pieces of wood are. He will measure every piece of wood and make sure that the neck and the body he puts together 
fits together and they don't have like dissonant frequencies that will cancel like destroy the sustain and all that so he's like super super exact when he's selecting parts of for his guitars whether it's uh, like electronics and parts and hardware or even the wood or the finish so this is what you will get if you order a tone fox guitar from him tone fox is a little different because he thought like okay it's nice to offer the best of the best for well a lot of money because it takes a lot of time um, for those who can afford it but what about all the people who would want to have something that's very close to this but just doesn't have that kind of budget This is why he made the brand Tone Fox, where he takes existing necks and bodies and puts them together with the same amount of attention to detail as what he would have for his own creations, for his own bodies and necks. So he will go to a supplier and select a few necks and a few bodies that are good enough for him and where he feels like, okay, this neck fits to that body, puts them together, okay, this one guitar covered then does that a couple more times, Tom Fox will make around nine, maybe 10 of the golden ones. Uh, there's another finish, like a surf green, seafoam green kind of finish, which looks really sick too. And uh, we'll make around nine of those two and one or two lefties per color. So this is a really limited run. We're talking about like, what is that? Like 20 guitars in total, something like that. But this way he can offer to a couple of people, a handful of people, uh, that kind of treatment as what you would expect from him if you buy like an original Tone Fox, just for a way lower price. And I'm not only talking about physical fit, like how the neck fits in the body, like in the neck pocket, which by the way, obviously fits perfectly. Like there's no space between, it's just as tight as it gets, just how it should be. And it's not always like that, as we know, but that's an issue with mass production. Uh, this is a perfect fit, but what I mean by fitting together is that the neck, its resonances, the body, the weight, and all that just works perfectly. That's how you can tell a guitar is a luthier guitar, because someone who knows what he's doing uh, just made sure that it all works. These parts, the neck and the body, don't arrive to the Tone Fox workshop the way they look now. Uh, the neck comes unfinished with like a blank headstock, so they make the headstock shape, they put the decal on, they will finish it with nitro, they will round off the fretboard edge, um, they will um, level the frets and make sure that the fret ends are nice, uh, which they really, really are. That's why it feels like a, a, a super expensive custom shop. Um, they put in the bow knot and file it, obviously. So that's already um, a big part of what they are doing. And then the body, which comes finished, but there is barely any routing. Like uh, the, the string through holes are there, but that's pretty much it. They will then route the pickup and uh, the, uh, for the pick guard, of course, for the uh, pots and everything, they have to make the cavity. They will place the bridge and mount the bridge as well. And they didn't like the way the finish was on these bodies. They were just too glossy. So they went over it and uh, just buffed it back to some sort of a, a VOSE kind of shine, which is nice because it's less plasticky feeling and it still has that kind of semi-gloss. All right, my thoughts on the Alcaster. I wouldn't say I was skeptical first, but I was really looking forward to holding it in my hands. So the first time I've heard about this guitar, I was like, okay, okay, wow, that's really interesting. That's pretty much the same thing as what I did with that guitar. I'm not sure if it's on screen yet, right on the side. That's my self-built parts caster, the trouble caster, which I made 
the same way. And I've found a body, which I kind of like the weight, the resonances and everything. I found a, a neck, which then I modified, and then I finished the whole thing and put it together and rerouted the body for the pickups and put the Bixby on, etc. It was a lot of work. And it only turned out that good because the body and the neck were good enough to begin with. And uh, I paid so much attention to every detail and tested stuff. And finally, I arrived to a point where I was like really happy with the guitar. It's the same vibe for the Alcaster. It's a, a master luthier taking care of each and every detail. These are bodies that are made in Korea and the necks come from Japan. And he, he has his sources like the suppliers and goes there and checks them out and selects those which really work well. And then um, he makes a really good guitar out of them. This is how Tone Fox can make these guitars, the Alcasters, so affordable for what they are. These are luthier built super high-end parts casters, basically. So they don't have to spend all that time on making a neck and making a body. They just select a good neck and a good body and then put it together and do all the fine stuff like the fret ends and the action and leveling the frets and putting it in a bone knot and making sure that the pickups will sound fantastic. As told, these are hand-wired pickups for this model. So you can save a lot of money because they save a lot of time with building this guitar the way they make it. This is all the time I had with this guitar. Unfortunately, I have to send it back, but um, I'm thinking already, which is scary. You guys take it easy and let me know in the comments below what you think about this luthier built parts caster thingy. I'm really looking forward to seeing that in the comments below. So let me know what you think about this whole subject. You guys take it easy. We'll see each other next week in a new video and we'll meet down there in the comments. I'll be back. Bye-bye.